So welcome once again to our discussion on dynamic panel data model and we were discussing about a specific examples from the UK context where we are taking 140 forms data to understand what are the factors that determine the form's employment and we assume that the form's employment, the ith form's employment in a particular year, if it is denoted by yit, then that depends on its own lag value along with other factors like what was the prevailing wage rate, labor, capital and the aggregate output which was used as a proxy for uh, the demand. And we say that this is a dynamic model we are hypothesizing. What is the reason? Because hiring and firing is costly for the firm. So what the firm will employ in a particular year that depends very much on its previous value. That means how much the firm have already employed in the previous period. And if you recall yesterday we learned basically how to uh, conduct the post estimation checkup for this dynamic panel data model. We said that once we estimate any dynamic panel data model then basically the next step would be to check whether my estimates are reliable and how do you know that just by conducting two post estimation checkups one is the presence of higher order autocorrelation or not because the construction itself says that autocorrelation of order one must be there if it is not there then only there is a problem because it indicates the presence of the lag dependent variable is redundant and secondly since in this generalized method of moments which is the major technique to use uh, to estimate the dynamic panel data model uh, it involves so many instruments so we need to check whether all those instruments are basically satisfying over identifying restrictions so we learned only how to check for the first first estimation checkup that is presence of higher order autocorrelation but we have not said anything about the over identifying restriction and all probably we'll talk about that over identifying restrictions how to check uh, later on so uh, before we come back to today's discussion uh, i will quickly uh, uh, quickly uh, go through one more important concept that we learned which was basically the afod transformation that means forward orthogonal transformation forward orthogonal deviation basically so that means in short if we write this is let's say the dynamic panel data model once again dynamic panel data model And our variable was like this yit equals to rho yit minus 1 plus beta 1 xit plus u sorry ai plus vit. And then we said that the estimation technique basically requires yit minus yit minus 1 equals to rho y i t minus 1 minus y i t minus 2 plus beta 1 x i t minus x i t minus 1 plus v i t minus v i t minus 1. This is the first difference transformation. So, yit minus yit minus 1, this is called first difference transformation. And then we said that this first difference transformation, it has a major drawback. What is the drawback? If you are working with a panel which is unbalanced in nature, then some of your observations will be missing. So, if yit is missing in any, for any particular form, then both delta yit and delta yit plus 1 would be missing. So that means the first difference transformation basically will uh, magnify the gaps uh, in, 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 a, in a 
unbalanced uh, panel and that will lead to huge loss of observations. Then we said that uh, what is the solution? Solution was the forward orthogonal deviation instead of deducting the previous value from the contemporaneous one what we actually do we can subtract the mean value of all the future available informations from yit and in that case even if some of your observations are missing we can always compute the average so this average value is basically available for all the periods except the last one and in that way you can minimize the loss of observations and interestingly we have showed yesterday that if you use that FOD transformation in unbalanced panel then uh, by reducing or minimizing the observations it can actually help uh, improving the quality of the estimates okay how you we showed that if we use FOD transformation then our estimates that means coefficient of yit minus 1 it, it goes in that range that means within the uh, upper and lower bound of the estimates set by the fe and ols estimations right and then we also learned uh, we also learned how to use uh, xt abound 2 instead of xt abound uh, to estimate a dynamic panel data model basically we discussed about the difference gmm that means here we were using two ivs two ivs are suggested one is yi t minus 2 and next one is delta yi t minus 2 so if you use this one then it is called difference gmm if you use this as well as this then it is called a system gmm so today what we will do we will quickly estimate a dynamic panel data model using this uh, yit minus 2 as the in instrument that means a difference gmm and we will quickly see the property of that estimate and we will apply then system gmm delta yit minus 2 and then we will see is there any improvement in the quality of the estimates so we will once again use the same data set this is arilano and bonds original data set right so there the command that we are going to use is xt abon 2 xt abon 2 then my dependent variable n and then all my independent variables which is lag of this nl1 and nl2 then wedge rate then capital and capital of 2 kl1 and kl2 and then we will be using ys then ys l1 and ys l2 this is how we have and then we have ER dummies. This is how we have specified our model and then we need to specify what is our endogenous variable and we were using only one endogenous variable that is NL1. Right? Then we need to specify what is our exogenous variables. Then exogenous that means those variables will be used as uh, their own IV. So, these are all uh, W then we have WL1 all right W and then K K and then we have kl2 k kl1 kl2 and then we have uh, we have ys 
then ys1, ys2, and we have this is also yr star as our iv style variable and then since it is a difference gmm we do not need the level equation no level no level uh, and we need robust standard error and we need small sample correction. So, this is how we can specify a dynamic panel data model in its difference. Uh, this is basically a specification of difference GMM. Sorry, this is no level equation. I need to put no level equation. Sorry, this is no level equation. So, sorry, I have made again mistake. There is, there should not be any comma. Yeah. Yeah. So, now this is, this is the dynamic panel data model estimation. So, what we are having here, we are having uh, the difference GMM we have estimated, right? We have estimated difference GMM using 41 command, 41 instruments, right? But the problem here you see the coefficients is coming out to be 0 0.25. So, much lower than the theoretically set uh, lower limit uh, given by your fixed effect uh, transformation right now how do you improve on that one solution is basically to estimate a different a system gmm that means in terms of our model what we are discussing here we are using yi t minus 2 as the instrument for a variable which is basically in differenced form right so that means y i t minus 2 acts as a poor proxy for delta y i t minus 1. So, since the variable is in difference form, we must use the delta y i t minus 2 as well as instrument. So, this is a poor proxy and the problem as we discussed earlier, the severity of the problem increases when the variables are in other explanatory variables, they follow random walk, right. So, solution is the system GMM. system GMM that means use use y i t minus 2 as well as delta y i t minus 2 as instrument. So, that means what we are doing here, we are considering both the level equation as well as the difference equation as a system of equations. Then, 
yit minus 2 lag of the level is used as instrument for the difference equation like earlier and delta yit minus 2 is used as instrument for the level equation right and this way when we use a system gmm then we will see whether uh, the quality of the inst uh, uh, coefficients estimated coefficients is improving or not how do you check quality first of all it should lie within that interval let us see now so here we will put the same command but instead of no level equation i will remove that right so if i remove no level equation that means i am asking stata to estimate a system gmm right i will only add i will only add one thing here so let me estimate this model first so this is let me see what we have estimated this is dynamic panel data one step system gmm model we have estimated and by doing so what is my coefficient 0 0.78 so that means the coefficient is lying within the interval okay so system gmm is basically uh, is an improvement over the difference gmm because of the 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 type of instruments what we are using while difference gmm could not guarantee our estimates to lie within the interval system gmm actually guaranteed that yes our estimates are lying within the interval so with xt upon 2 we can easily estimate two types of dynamic panel data model one is difference gmm another one is system gmm and as we can see that we are not only getting the estimates but also we are getting whether uh, my post estimation checkups are also satisfied or not what is my year one test look at this year one uh, p value is 0, 0.000 which means that i am uh, able to reject my null hypothesis what is my null null is presence of first order autocorrelation however uh, there is no autocorrelation sorry there is no autocorrelation which is rejected so that means first order autocorrelation is present in this particular model but here what is happening the second order autocorrelation is not there those two tests are also getting right so these are inbuilt within this xt upon 2 command all right now throughout this approach throughout this discussion if you look at that what type of estimates we are getting in a dynamic panel data model please keep one thing in mind that so far we have assumed so far what we have assumed that when you are modeling employment of a particular year yit which is again a function of yit minus 1 that will lead to endogeneity right that we have explained earlier how inclusion of yit minus 1 in the model it leads to endogeneity but we have assumed that there is only one endogenous variable and that is the lag dependent variable yit minus 1 and we assume that wage capital and uh, other factors forget about other factors for the time being the question is should we consider wage and capital also as exogenous variable so that means the question that we are raising over here are wages and capital are wages and capital really exogenous that is the question that we are asking 
okay now why do you think that wages and capital can also be endogenous look at our dependent variable our dependent variable is yit which is employment yit is basically employment and it is actually a function of i am saying let's say wage and capital and so far we have assumed that only wage will lead to yit capital will also lead to yit but there is no reverse causality running from yit to wage and capital and what happens if yit what happens if if yit also determines wage and capital okay now if you if we think logically what amount of what amount of uh, wage that we are that we are including uh, uh, what amount of employment that we have yit that may also lead to that may also determine what amount of capital should be employed by the firm because the production depends on a particular combination of labor and capital so if we assume capital will determine employment employment may also determine what should be the capital amount because of their joint determination so that means we can understand easily that there might be cases where yit is also leading to uh, the determination of capital similarly yit the employment in a particular year will it determine wages so that means what would be what would be the wage that would be prevailing in the market that also depends on that also depends on the level of employment so that means level of employment may also determine this so this relationship could be very well simultaneous in nature and this simultaneity will lead to auto so will lead to again endogeneity this is endogeneity due to the reverse causality there and me there might be other reasons for endogeneity as well there might be some uh, uh, some omitted variable bias and other things so that means even if we don't discuss all those things in detail we can understand easily that uh, uh, that these w wage rate and capital which we have assumed so far as exogenous in the model these factors could be endogenous so when you will be working with your data to estimate a dynamic panel data model apart from the lagged dependent variable you should be carefully looking at other factors if at all there are other endogenous variables also in the uh, in the model so what the blundell and bond 1998 they mentioned Blundell and Bond and Bond 1998 mentioned mentioned the mentioned actually they they do not do not expect expect wages and capital wages and capital to be strictly exogenous right so if we assume if 
wages and capital to be indigenous then the specification to estimate a dpd changes so that means earlier if you look at our command what is the command we have given look at this this is xt upon 2 n n l1 all this and then i said that gmm within gmm i have given only in l1 lag of the dependent variable i assumed as endogenous variable and i have assumed all other factors as exogenous now the moment w and k also become endogenous this particular specification does not work so that means those factors will also come now within this gmm okay within the gmm so how will you write your uh, command then when you assume wages and capital to be endogenous look at this i will put again xt upon 2 and then in in l1 okay in l2 in l2 w w l1 w l1 and then i am using precisely first and second lag of capital and industrial output right this is the uh, compressed way of writing the same command right and then i am giving yr start the state uh, year specific dummy and then what i am doing this is my specification xt upon 2 n n l1 n l2 w w l1 and then uh, first and second lag of capital and uh, output all right so after that i will put gmm style and within that gmm style what i am including lag of in in and then w and k okay so l dot in w and k so this will be my uh, gmm style uh, uh, instruments and then i will put iv style and in iv style i have l and then within bracket again 0 by 2 sorry huh. ys and yr star er and then i have this right okay and then what i need let's say i am using same difference gmm no level equation no level equation and robust 
and small. Okay, look at what is happening. So, what we have estimated? One step difference GMM. Now, when I am using one step difference GMM, earlier what we saw? The difference GMM are inefficient compared to the system one because difference GMM could not guarantee the estimates to lie within the theoretically determined bound. But once we check the specification properly, then even within the difference GMM also see our estimate is lying is now 0 0.81, which is lying well within the interval of 0 0.74 and 1.04. So, how did this happen? Difference GMM improved the quality of the estimates because we checked for specification. Probably earlier, what we were assuming that wage rate and capital, they are exogenous. The moment we change them to endogenous, then our model performed much better than what it was doing earlier. So, that is why when we estimate the model, one thing we have to keep very carefully in our mind and we have to be very careful about whether we are specifying our endogenous and exogenous variable properly. If we fail to do so, then that will lead to this type of problem. So, just by specifying our model, that means just by bringing the endogenous variable from the set of IV style to GMM style. Earlier, we were considering only employment as endogenous variable. That means, employment means lag of its uh, uh, employment. But the moment I put that wage and capital also as endogenous variable, the quality of my estimates, it has improved significantly. Right? And then we will see, we will see that my uh, uh, test for autocorrelation of first order is again uh, rejected null hypothesis that means there is first order autocorrelation, but second order autocorrelation is not there. 